Right, so uh, we are starting with game one of um, standard between Division One, Emerson and uh, Whiskey Burn. Who was that again? Tyler? No, Oliver, I believe. No, I believe it was Oliver King. Okay, so we are here with game one between Oliver King and Emerson J. Lardy. Emerson being on the bottom of the screen. He will be requesting hand cards immediately. Emerson on his typical um, Simic. Uh, ah. Hi, Wim, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, I'm already recording. Uh, we are joined by Matthew. Thank you, uh, great. So, uh, all I need to do is watch and. Uh... Yes, both. I'm done. So, it's uh, Oliver at the top and Emerson at the bottom? Yeah, for me as well. Uh, so. And Emerson is on his Simic, um, Simic Eldrazi. Yeah, we've seen this the last couple of weeks. It's it's been pretty effective actually, particularly the um the Baral's expertise is, is the key card in this deck. Yeah. Um it's got two kinds of ways to uh get more tempo and Baral's expertise in Elder Deep Hint. Now the problem he has right now is that he, he does have two Baral's expertise and Elder Deep Hint, but he doesn't have any cards to add to the board and really make use of that tempo swing. Let me just switch hands. I haven't got all of his permission yet, but um, we, we have seen pretty consistently over the, over the season that Oliver tends to play the blue-red control and play it quite effectively as well. Uh, yeah, I haven't uh, managed to get permission for all of the sand cards either. Just to put this in this matchup into some context and perspective, it's it's a big one on a number of fronts. Uh, first, it's Emerson's birthday, so happy birthday, Emerson! He'll be trying to get a win uh, on his birthday. And also, also in the league, it's a huge showdown between first and second. And to give those watching some context, Oliver is ahead by uh, four points, but Emerson has a game in hand, and Oliver hasn't had his bye. So after this round, there's only uh, you play eight matches. After this round, Oliver will only have one match left. So uh, Emerson can actually go ahead of Oliver on points with the match in hand if he wins today. So I'm going to go as far as to say that I think this match is going to determine who the champion is going to be. No, that could very well on. be. Now and, I see Rogue Refiner being disallowed here, just to prevent that card draw. And it, I, I don't know if he knows about the Deep Fiend, but the Refiner would have been a good target for the Deep Fiend as well. Yeah, um, and Baral's expertise isn't going to do that much against the Blue-Red control deck. Which is uh, problematic for Emerson because he has two of them in hand. Well, the, the problem for Oliver here, though, is that Long Tusk covers five power, which is out of range of any burn spell that, or removal spell that a red blue deck would have. Yeah, they don't play Lightning Axe, do they? 
No, and, and even the um, harness lightning, he hasn't got the energy to do five damage. I need to get a lot of energy in order to be able to. So I, I think this first game is going to go to Emerson. Well, kind of depends if we. Yeah, like right now, um, Oliver can actually do double harness lightning and still be off pretty well. The other option, if he uh, has a one harness lightning, so if he's casting it now, he must have the the double play. Yeah. Other thing, what I was thinking of was a glimmer of genius into a harness lightning, which which could have taken down. Um, the long task cap as well. Just returning to that to the league standings for a moment. The, the other big showdown here is for the standard champion in Division One. Oliver's twenty four points, so he's won every single standard match this season he's played. He's undefeated in standard. Hey, just like uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, more interestingly, so is Emerson. Emerson's also undefeated in standard. Oh, really? So this so, is. Uh, this has huge implications for that as well. And in modern, both of these players are only a point behind Anthony Fredrickson, who's leading the modern table. That's pretty impressive, especially because Division 1 is filled with uh, people who are good to play. Yeah, and I, I think the two harness lightnings into a glimmer and uh, no play for Emerson might actually just mean that uh, the game is won by Oliver. I'm going to ask in chat real quick whether he can. Uh... Yeah, I, I think if Emerson, oh, sorry, if Oliver had taken that hit last turn, he would have been in serious trouble yeah. to drop to seven. But twelve is a pretty healthy life, particularly when he's up to two, four, six mana. He's he's in Gear Hulk range now. But also importantly, um, Emerson can now cast Elder Deep Fiend, hard cast it. Yeah, um, isn't he one mana short? Oh no, he can with. Uh, uh, oh, now, now he's one mana short. Yeah. Yeah, now he's Yeah, I, I think Oliver's. It looks like he's got a fair idea of what deck he's up against because the brain doesn't really have any good targets in this deck. Yeah. Okay. And now we'll be able to take a look at Oliver's hand, and it's ooh interesting. So um, a hero Griffith elimination, which is going to give him extra ma extra cards, and then a harness lightning, which is good because he's still got four. Energy left and two magma sprays to deal with smaller threats. So it's interesting that I chose to use a braid rather than, uh, a, ha than, than a magma spray there. Yeah, this is a big hieroglyphic elimination. I think he's, he's got to find something. Got to uh, start putting a threat on, threat on the board. And we'll probably see another deep print coming down at end of turn uh, for. Oh, it's going to come down at upkeep. Take a look at what he's drawn. Just two lands, but um, the harmless lightning can actually deal with the other you know, deep fiend. So as long as he just taps beforehand. Yeah, you can see him tapping down all the red sources. Yep. If, if he was expecting a, a Harness Lightning in response here, he probably would have been better to tap down blue sources instead of that mountain. Yeah, um, I think I would have gone for like second blue source rather than the mountain just to uh, try and get Disallow offline for my next turn. But I think perhaps it's because... Yeah, I'm not sure. And and now we see Baral's expertise that's looked so good in the last few weeks. It's suddenly looking really bad with two of them sitting in hand. Yeah, and uh, they'll probably be coming out in uh, the next 
uh, in sideboarding and we see a supreme well being drawn for the turn drawn for the turn here. Oh probably why he tapped down the red sources was because he was expecting uh, Oliver to draw into a harness lightning. Well that's a good draw for Yeah so uh, Supreme Will proof. Supreme Will can search up can... another card, but then that card can be picked by top knots here, so and he can't uh, fire off two magma sprays here. Nope. So that's that was really a good draw here for thought knot. Uh, for uh, so, so Emerson. What, so which card are you going to take with the thought knot? I think I'd go for Supreme Will because um, it could always go searching for an answer and could find something like a Gearhawk, which would be way more disastrous than two magma sprays. And one draw from uh, Top Knots here. I mean, taking a Magma Spray is also a good choice. But yeah, Supreme Will. Yeah, uh, I, I think I'd take the Supreme Will because looking at four cards, he's bound to find something that can do something for him. Yeah, and he can find way worse. <laughs> and the draw for the turn is a Gear Hulk. Oh my god, that's, yeah, top decking so 101. He, he, and it's probably a signal he hasn't fired off to see if he's going to use a magma sprays. If he doesn't use the magma sprays, then um, probably going to. Probably, yeah, it's probably a pretty good signal. MS but, knows about yeah. the magma sprays. I think Gear Hulk is something you want to play either way just to get. Well, oh, yeah. Deep, he's got the Deep Fiend, so he's going to be able to protect yeah. the Thought Knots here. here. Yeah, um, the Torrential Gear Hulk is coming to come down. Oh, then this if, is going to be a bad turn for Oliver. Then again, um, Emerson knows about the two Magma Sprays, and if uh, El Deepin comes down, he can just tap two red for the Magma Sprays and still kill still kill the the top knots here. And then he just untapped during his turn, getting all the mana he needs. So we'll see another deep print coming down here, but I think that might actually not be the best play. Well, I, I mean, it, it taps down the gear hulk and forces him to use the magma sprays here. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that Oliver doesn't really mind uh, using the magma sprays in this position. Oliver's... Uh, oh, the glimmer of genius is still on the stack. <sighs> Yeah, so he's going to see whether he can find something else first. And, and he's uh, going to get a card from Thought Knot. Yeah, so he finds a land and a disallow. It's a cycling land, which is important. It's also a red land, so if he wants to keep open the possibility of playing uh, Nico Bolas, he's going to need to keep it. And Thought Knot here is going to be taken down here by Magma Sprays. <laughs> Important thing here is that Thought Knot's uh, ability is when it leaves the battlefield because it w if it was when it dies, then it would uh, Magma Sprays would, wouldn't be as good. And we see a cycle for, cycling from sensor here and step still because of one mana left. I think Gearhog's not a very good target for. Uh... For the Browns' expertise, either. Yeah, uh, no. Um, if you bring that back, it's not going to go too well. Okay, so he's going to cycle, in, cycle the fitted pools. Drawing a hell of a lot of lands. Yeah. Well, it is something that's typical for control decks, is that they play more lands, so they also draw more of them. Um, but uh, I'm pre pretty sure that he is drawing more lands than normally would be. <laughs> and perhaps as well here that the Gearhulk is kind of representing one of the weaknesses of Emerson's deck, in that Emerson doesn't really play removal. His only removal is the, the tempo from Brawl's expertise, but he bounces that gear hulk, he's just giving Oliver a free spell. Uh, interesting thing here is uh, Hashap Oasis being activated, and 
we'll see whether that gets disallowed or whether the issues to just go along with it. He does still have a wandering fumarole that he can just fire up and throw in front of the, the Elder Deep Fiend, so plenty of options here for Oliver. Oh, he's going to cycle. So fumarole is not an option now. Yeah, no, I think he'll be going for the disallow here then, unless he wants to take 8 damage to the face. Seems like a dangerous option. So he's just going to. I mean, I I can't imagine him throwing a gear hawk in front of the elder deep fiend. So... Yeah, so he's going to go to four. So so now the barrel's expertise is a viable option, depending on how Oliver taps his turn. Yeah. Um... Because Lumbering Falls can also be fired up, but it doesn't have enough mana to fire up Lumbering Falls in Gasparal's expertise, so it will be interesting to see how Emerson navigates. Spatial Contortion is actually pretty interesting as well. He could Spatial Contortion his Lumbering Falls here. Yeah, but that would kill him. Oh, that would kill him. No, it's a 3-3, yeah. three, three, sorry, yeah. What they could do is attack with Lumbering Falls uh, and Elder Deep Fiend, and then if Torrential Gearhog blocks Lumbering Falls, he can uh, kill kill it with Spatial Contortion, and if Wandering Fumarol came down, he could just kill that with Spatial Contortion. Yeah, he, he could have actually attacked there, as you said, because he'd be forced to block the Deep Fiend, so he could have taken the Fumarol before blocks. Now, probably the reason why he didn't uh, do it is because he was um, rightfully fearing a counter spell. You see, Oliver's got the glimmer of genius now. Yeah, he's also got a essence scanner to neatly deal with the long tusk cap. See what it gets of the glimmer at the end of Emerson's turn. And two supreme two wills uh, being the. He's just going to fire off one of them immediately to try and find a way to win the game. And he finds a gear hulk. Magma Spray being the draw for, <laughs> for the turn, but that's not going to be too too important at this point. Shaper coming down for Emerson will that be countered. Well, or it I can think actually Magma just be, is a clean yeah. answer to that. Yeah, indeed, uh, there's no really need to counter it. Magma Spray is actually very good because it will exile. 
Meaning he doesn't even get the, the advantage from the reshaper. Yeah, I thought that uh, magma spray wouldn't be too good in this situation, but um, it seems I was wrong because <laughs> the draw for the turn for Emerson was really uh, like magma spray is almost perfectly made for killing off a matter reshaper. Now we see Oliver doubting here. I'm not sure why. Yeah, uh, I, I think from what he's seen of Emerson's deck, there's a few targets for hmm, there's a few targets for the magma spray, but I, I think this is clearly the best one in, in the deck. Perhaps he wants to glimmer and see where he can find something else. No, he's just going to essence scatter. Oh, I think. He, I get what he's planning. So he's planning on just um, smashing with the gear hulks, and if one of the gear hulks gets blocked by an elder deep fiend, then he'll um, use the magma spray on the elder deep fiend. No, I think I personally would have just gone for magma spraying the. Um, uh, the Eldrazi and then the matter reshaper and then uh, flashing Lightning back. Draw. Yeah, I I would have flashed back a harness lightning with the torrential gear hog. But uh, drawing it works just as well. And suddenly now we've got a two turn clock in all of his favor. Yeah. One of the good things about uh, control, a blue red control in this uh, era, is that it finishes games really quickly. And there's a third one, so uh, Oliver's yeah. going to take game one. It'll be interesting to see how Emerson's deck transforms during sideboarding. We are getting on our way with game two of standard here between uh, Emerson and Oliver. It seems, yeah, uh, we see a tireless tracker. I don't know whether he plays that in main beforehand. Rogue Refiner coming down here. Will that be countered? Uh, Supreme will not going to do Oops. it. Oops. <laughs> free reveal there. <laughs> yep. Yeah, next turn he, he's. So he's got Supreme Will, so. I don't imagine we'll be seeing the track of this turn. Yeah, um... That seems... one you can counter if you wish. Yeah, and even if it isn't countered or killed, um, it's still 2-2, uh, so it's, it is going to be a problem for uh, Oliver if he lets it resolve. Now, Oliver has got more than enough uh, more than enough spells to work with. Though Emerson's going to be able to deep fiend in all of his upkeep next turn. Yeah. So we'll see what he does here. I imagine he does nothing. Yeah, I imagine yeah. just swinging yeah. with the, the rogue refiner seems like a good idea. Yeah, he'll, he'll want to hold that waste for the tracker next turn, I'd imagine. Mm, no, he's drawn. He underneath the hub as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he can play the land because then he, next turn he can also get it out of Magma Spray range. Yeah, now if he plays land next turn, he can also do that. Actually. And he's going, oh, for, he's the, going for it. The Dialus tracker here. Now we met with a disallow. It would have actually been interesting if um, he had, if Emerson had just passed the turn, whether Oliver would have gone for the Magma Spray or the Glimmer of Genius. Now with the Magma Spray, this is really... This turned out quite badly for uh, Emerson here. And you can see he's going to have Gear Hulk on my next turn and Glimmer yep. at the end of this turn. And that second Elder Defiend's not going to do too much. 
this is a nice play from Emerson because it's it's kind of a free hit. Uh, Oliver's not going to fire that fumarole and, and miss out on a gear hold next turn. Yeah, um, it definitely is a good um, way. But the problem is that I actually like Oliver's play more. And he's going to be the one with the gear hold next turn, so... Um, Whilst the Elder Deep Fiends are just... And in essence, scatter in there, so... Yep. 3, 4, 6. It's starting to get a bit away from Emerson. Yeah, and if Emerson decides to swing it with Lumbering Falls this turn as well, then he'll be met with a gear hook, so... Um, will he risk it, or will he just... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think he only did it last turn because he knew he was expecting gear hook turn 6. Yeah. So you see, you seen if Oliver was going to fall for the trick, which Oliver, of course, wasn't going to. What is he? This is yeah. the glimmer. Yeah. So yeah, blue red valuing it out big time here. Yeah, there's just too much card advantage now. I think um, the Aldrazi really need to see a dot knots here or some early threats in order to be able to uh, really deal with uh, the control decks. Then again, if they, they get countered early um, game, then sometimes I really feel like there's there are hands that control can get that you just can't win against. Yeah, and uh, as you look at him, it's yeah. three deep bins. He yeah. only needs one more land to get that going, but... Yeah, and then that will be countered by uh, a quick essence scatter, which he now has to. And, yeah, a sensor to add to the array of counter spells. Yeah, I, I think the story of this match is just the, the Baral's expertise, but and particularly the, the Simic colors. Uh, it, it's so effective against you know 90% of the meta. It's just the, the Gear Hulk is the worst possible card you can run into with that with a Baral's expertise. Yeah, I think it's probably not great for con against control decks where um, stuff like Elder Deep Fiend are easily countered. So you don't really have a lot of cards to throw away to um uh, then you have a lot of creatures to throw away to an elder deep fiend browse expertise isn't going to be able to hit any useful targets um the eldrazi like dot knots here do help there but um and we see an elder deep fiend emerging here in response to the magma spray and that will probably be just be countered Yep, and it gets the maximum value with the sensor. Yep. So now Emerson, is, I mean, you can jump block with the Lumbering Falls next turn, but... I think he'll probably see him trying to... Uh... Cast an Elder Deep Fiend, yeah. that yeah, will be counted. Yeah, cast it now, 2, 4, 6, 8. Yeah. Yeah, he can't tap down the Gear Hulk, uh, which means he'd survive another yeah. turn, but then the next turn he'll also try to Elder Deep Fiend. That will also be counted, and I don't really think he's got a way out of this situation. Interestingly, uh, this spell has been brought in by Oliver, so he was expecting a counter war against the Simic Onslaught. Spell and negate. Yeah, so even if the essence scatter, it's gonna he's gonna get two turns, but the three of his best cards are gonna be down now. Yep. And he's really going to need to top deck good cards in order to be able to do anything. And he's going to need to use his mana every turn just in order to survive. And he's conceded. Yep. So Oliver takes standard two games to zero. Yep. 
That's that for standard, a standard championship. <laughs> yeah, it is too. Yeah, we, I think we can always crown our standard champion now. This, that's okay, so we are uh, getting on our way here with game one of modern between number one and number two of division one in the American League. Emerson J. Lardy on the bottom of the screen and Oliver King on top. And just to put this again, put this in perspective, uh, Anthony Fredrickson leads the modern championship with 17 points. Both these players are second with 16 points. Emerson with a game in hand on the other two. Yeah, so we're seeing Emerson's hand here, um, and he's on on the um, band spirits deck. Yeah, but both these players on the decks that they've been playing now for a couple of seasons. Uh, Oliver's on his Jund Death Shadow list. Take a look at the hands. So Tot seizes. Um, that could be irritating. Abrupt decay. Because on, on the other hand, he's losing to live in an aggressive matchup that might actually do a lot. But that shadow is going to be a big threat. What do you take here? Um, I feel like I'd take this either spell queller or drox. I think probably drox call captain. Yeah, I'd, I'd be inclined to take the drug score as well. W one I... pretty cool uh, interaction for this match um, is a phantasmal image. It mm -hmm. can come down and copy a death shadow. Uh, yeah, it can actually. <laughs> or actually one of um, all of us. Uh, got to look at the other hand to remember the name. Uh, the the Tyler McCoyfs, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if um, if Oliver's aware of that interaction. I think he might be inclined to take this phantasmal image if that was the case. If he knew, if he knew about that. Yeah, that would be, definitely be an interesting play. So I, I used to play the Spirits deck quite a bit a couple of years back, and I remember very well winning, winning a match. It was a, in a WMCQ where I played Phantasmal Image and copied my opponent's Snapcast Image so I could flash back uh, a path to Excel to remove the blocker and push through the last damage. Mm, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really cool. That card is really cool when it works, but when it doesn't work and you don't have targets, it's really bad. Actually, I think that with Emerson's hand here, I'd be inclined to just start season to and then Totsies again, so then we're looking at taking two cards rather than just one of them. And then you can actually go for like both Phantasmal images. But you're still left with a Spell Queller and a Drog Skull Captain then. So yeah, he took the Drog Skull. He, he does have um, the Abrupt Decay as well, which can take uh, care of one of them. Yeah. The Bauble will get him a draw. Uh, can Abrupt Decay actually target a creature with higher converted mana costs? Because I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't think uh, it, it's th yeah. three or less. So I don't think there's anything in um, yeah. Emerson's deck that costs yeah. more than three. I, uh, um, and it's also nothing that he can copy from Oliver's deck that's less than three. And it's more than three. Because I was thinking, like, um, if you copy, you probably also copy the converted mana cost, and if that would then be higher. Well, well one problem with that though is the phantasmal image because it's a um, an illusion. As soon as it even becomes targeted by a spell, it dies. Yeah, but that's why I was asking whether abrupt decay can target non-land permanents with higher converted mana cost than oh, tree. I see. Yeah, and I don't think it can, but. Um, it probably won't matter because everything in this match is going to be lower than uh, 3 CMC, so... No, I, I think Oliver here can start running out the Death Shadow because th there's no removal in well, Barnt Colors uh, that cares about your the power of the creature that's played in Modern. 
Yeah. So Path to Exile is going to take it down, whether it's a 1 power or 10 power. So you could actually go for a Totsis and a, a Dead Shadow. That seems like a good play. Do I go for the Spell Queller here, or...? Yeah, so he's going for, gone for the Spell Queller. And of course, uh, Emerson cannot copy the Death Shadow because he doesn't. his life total is not the correct amount. Yep. <laughs> Going to have to go away for a bit, but um, yeah. we'll be back soon. So we're just looking at um, oh, oh, an Inquisition could be timely. So it looks like hand disruption is going to be the story of this first match. He can actually Inquisition and cast the Tamagoy. But casting a timer goif is going to allow Emerson to copy the goif and get some defensive power on the board. Just looking through the decks. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Four card types, so the goif would be a four five. Actually, I I always forget when you when you look at the graveyard at, at the top, it tells you how many card types. There's two and one and four and the other. So Oliver here, he used the Inquisition, he took the Phantasmal Image, so now he's just thinking what the next play is. I'm guessing it's a toss-up between Selfless Spirit or uh, Tamagoy. He might be tempted by the by the Abrupt Decay and the Selfless Spirit because then... Oh, he's going to go Tamagoy for okay. Well, this is going to work out okay for him, I assume, because it's going to knock him to 10, he can fetch down to 9. Which means he can play Death Shadow. Sadly, for Emerson, though, he doesn't really know about the abrupt decay. Yeah, he, he fetches aggressively, so. I'm guessing he's copying the Death Shadow this turn. Right, sorry for the interruption. Yep. What, what we just saw in step, he, he aggressively fetched the Hello Fountain untapped, so he's going to copy the Death Shadow here. Yeah, uh, switch to... Sadly for Emerson though, there's going to be a blowout when... The, the abrupt decay will destroy the death shadow, even though. Yeah. Even the, even the... though selfless spirit's going to get sacked. So Oliver's going to take game one. Well, uh, wait. Can be can destroy the at moment. So the selfless spirit oh. can actually protect the death shadow. We see Emerson's got a path to exile. So. Yeah. So it really depends on. No, selfless spirit can't protect the death shadow because as soon as the death shadow is targeted by a spell, it um it will die. Oh yeah, it will actually. Um, interesting that that abrupt decay did not come down before combat. 
Yes, yeah, so this could actually be a big, big, big problem depending on what the top deck is here. Yeah, I, I think he needed to cast an abrupt decay before com before damage. Oh, sorry, before declaring attackers, so that he could at least push through four damage. Because now if uh, Emerson can find a chump blocker off the top, I think he's got this match. Yeah, I think even as long as they both don't find anything, Emerson's still got this match. Because he can swing with Selfless Spirit next turn, right. and Time Akoi will yeah, come exactly. in. Yeah, he's got 7 life. And then he can swing with Selfless Spirit again. If they both find something like a creature, then um, Emerson's also got this. So it will still depend on the, well, the matchup. Inter in interesting there that he didn't. Um, he let the time of golf die. So he's he's going to lose the match. Yeah, not sure what the thinking there was. Unless he doesn't know about the the illusion rule, and he was thinking that he'd just sack the selfless spirit anyway. Yeah, but then still, there's no real reason to wait for the abrupt decay. So he's gonna drop to. I, I think he needs a. He. he don't. Uh, we'll see yeah, what his he, last draw is. He's on removal or bust here. Oh uh, yeah, and because so he's not still, I think Emerson stole that one. Yep. Oliver's going to be on the play, so th that's quite a quick sideboard. They probably so certainly. I think Emerson would be used to this matchup. Oh yeah, so Oliver's saying now he, he forgot about the Phantasmal Image ability. Ah, uh, yeah. Cause I, I, so I guess when you forget about it, it, it would have been an absolute blowout if he cast Abrupt Decay and had the Selfless Spirit sacked in response. Yeah, but if that, Emerson... That, 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 that would have been his thinking without realizing the rule. Yeah, but if Emerson um, didn't sack in response, then he would have actually won the game as well, because the Inquisition of Kozilek wouldn't have been able to deal with the Selfless Spirit coming in twice. Inquisition of Kozilek hitting here. Plenty well, of good targets. Yeah, I, I think he take the, the Geist, Geist here. Yeah, Geist is my pick as well. Yeah, I think... I, I highly doubt he bought an Anger of the Gods, <coughs> although that's a possibility. But I think uh, his deck just has nothing that can deal with that card. But in, in terms of what Emerson wants to find, he's had some pretty poor draws. Like Normally he'd like a Noble Hierarch. Yeah, his turn one uh, plays haven't been uh, up to par. But even I do... the Mausoleum Wanderer on turn one would protect against the Thought Caesar. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's um, time we're going, going to come down here. Uh, Take a look at what Emerson's going to draw. And the Steel of the Godhead has been one of his draws, so that's that must have been really a disappointment for uh, <laughs> for Emerson here. Although I think actually the life gain could still be very important here in uh, the matchup. If you can find, if you can uh, cast a spell queller to get something big and then um, make it large and. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what the call is here. What yeah. are you going to take here? Well, Rattlechains is going to be played, I think, uh, and then I think I'm going to take Spellcrawler. Yeah, I, I think Spellcrawler is online next turn, so it's probably got to go here. Although Steel of the Godhead, if he if he's particularly scared of the, so, just with the trigger on yeah. stick. Yeah, I, I think I'm inclined to take the Spell Queller as well. Then, then he's only got a Selfless Spirit left. Yeah, still the God that isn't that great on just a white creature. Especially since uh, a lot of stuff removal can actually hit, still hit, like an Abrupt Decay still in hand, I think I'm not too afraid of. Yeah, and, and the other thing is the Abrupt Decay can actually remove Steel of the Godhead. Yeah, so even if Emerson finds a Another yeah. guys have so said draft. So you bought in the ley lines, you don't want to see that as the draw. Yeah, that's 
um, this game pretty much feels like it's uh, already over. Yeah, there's, there's Shadow coming down next turn. I don't see... I don't see how he's going to get himself out of this one. Actually, that shadow probably is not going to come out because um, he doesn't have a way to punish himself. Uh, yes. Lose some more life. So no steal the godhead on self and spirits. Kind of makes sense. You kind of expect the uh, self spirit to already die. Yeah, I think he would. He would reasonably assume that. Um, I forget the card's name. Uh, Abrupt decay. He'd re reasonably assume that Abrupt decay is in a Jun deck. I think most Jun decks would run yeah, it. He's already. Uh, he, he, he's already. He didn't actually see it. Uh. <sighs> No, he did see it. He did see it last yeah. game on uh, the illusion, but it um, that was. Oh, on... so he, he he played it in the end of the last game, did he? Yeah. Um, Colligan's command is going to be a big deal as well. Well, he can easily just flip yeah. that ley line. I think the ley line's irrelevant now. But yeah, he needs but another removal spell. What I would do with Colligan's command is just deal two damage to selfless spirits and bring back the Tarmogoyf. One, two, three. Yeah, and he can play it in the same Oh, wait, no, Tarmogoyf is exiled, so um, scrap that. Well, this is an interesting one. Actually, if he plays the ley line here, then Colligan's command can't target him. Yeah, but Colligan's command can come down in response to the ley line coming down. Because it's an instant speed. This is a tough choice here because if he swings with the spirit, yeah, he doesn't swing with the spirit. He's just going to make it worse from on the way back from Death Shadow. Yeah. Are we going to see a Colgan's command here? And the the other card that we haven't seen yet is Collected Company. Yeah, Collected Company is a big deal for the spirit deck, and not drawing it is. I mean, it would probably be the number one. Uh, targets for discard cards like Totsies. But if we, for example, see like a ley line on uh, turn zero and then uh, with a protecting a collected company in hand, I think that would do a lot to uh, win the game. Well, this is, he's swinging, yeah, I think he has to block because if there's any sort of removal, it's game over next turn. Yep. And again, it's, it's sometimes it's really a, where you have to sh change perspectives and not say like, if I do this and he has that, it's game over. And sometimes you have to do like, can I win if he doesn't have that? I like, can I win if he if he does have that, and then like go, well, I'm I lose anyway if he's got a removal, so I'm just going to try and win as to he doesn't have it. Yeah. So he skipped for game. So we're going to game three now. Yeah. And I think probably I would have actually tried to just win and hoped for no removal, as unlikely as it was. Okay, so we're back for the deciding modern match now. Only one Inquisition on one yeah. side. So Inquisition of Kozlik won't be able to get a, uh, a collected company. Now does Emerson have a collected company? Oh, he switched and he's got a hand with two ley lines. Do you even keep that hand? I feel like... I, I, it's a tough one. I, I think I would because it's got the removal spell. 
Ya. And it's outside of abrupt decay range. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's protected pretty much against... <laughs> the armor of the Veil won't really care about that, though. Oh, yes. Although the Spirit's deck is probably better than most at handling Liliana because they can flash in a lot of their spells at the end of turn. Mm -hmm. You're I feel certainly like... going to be able to get, get to Liliana off to Traverse. Yeah, I, I do feel... Like right yeah. now, Liliana is going to come down on turn three, and there's not going to be that much card draw from Emerson's side. So I feel like Path to Exile might actually just hit the bin through Liliana. Yeah, it's Liliana's. Oh, sorry, ley lines are really interesting here because a big part of Oliver's strategy is to be able to cast Thoughtseize to get your life total down, which he, he cannot do now. But when you have two ley lines in your hand, you've cost yourself um, two cards in the beginning. Yeah, two two cards. And when he when he actually mulliganed to get to those, he was down a card already. So it's it's kind of a risky proposition. Yeah, and, and I'm a, I'm a bit surprised as well that he didn't run that noble hierarch out turn one. Well, I think that was a good play just because it might have been hit by an abrupt decay. But now he really wants the mana for the collected company. Um, the property K is still going to hit it. Yeah, he's, he's going to be in an awkward position next turn with Liliana coming down if he gets rid of the path or the company. Yep, and I think I'd get rid of the path and try to hope in, try to run into a fourth land, but. Um... <laughs> And this is not the sight that Emerson wants to see. Cracks the fetch, but maybe there's, there's a spell queller here. Oliver's worried, but no. Just to put some mental pressure on. And Liliana is just twice as good here because she can get rid of the Inquisition. That's absolutely useless in his hand. Yeah, Oliver says he thought it was Spellqueller when he fetched. <laughs> That's one way to win a game. <laughs> yeah, this is a terrible one for Emerson. Two of his most important cards gone, he, he, the path. So he's really aiming for the collective company here. Needs a land this turn. And he gets and he, it. So this is going to be an excellent, excellent next turn because he can get Liliana to tick up to make Oliver discard, and then um, he can just... in response cast the company. And depending on what it gets from that, he might actually even protect his spells from uh, abrupt decays or tar fires, and uh, that would do a lot. Yeah, with two removal spells that he can actually play, uh, I think he wants to hit Drug Skull Captains and and the other one, I forget its name, Selfless Spirit. Yeah, and or a Drug Skull Captain and the one that copies a, phantasm, a Phantasmal Image together with a Drug Skull Captain would actually be pretty good. I think, yeah, can... I think if, he, if he hits two of those, he can't. I don't think he can lose from there. Yep. Also, a Geist of St. Tract would be such a big deal. Yeah, the Geist could actually... No, but if, I think if he hits a Geist, then Oliver would have to hold back Abrupt Decay to take care of the Angel so that uh, Liliana can minus to take down the Geist. Hmm, yeah. See, there's, there's a few... <coughs> Sorry. 
there's a few options there, but I, I think they all depend on uh, at least one drug skull captain. Because if he if he gets something like a spell coiler and a selfless spirit, it's going to be a blowout. Yeah. Um, so on the other hand, the guys of Saint Traft and another creature would actually be able to take down Liliana. I think. Uh, like if it's another two power. Uh, um, no, it'd have to be three yeah, power. It'd have to be a three power, like a selfless spirit. Yeah, and that doesn't actually have. So this is, this is a huge collected company. Let's see what he can find. Oh, that's two that you don't want. Yeah. So he's got a tar fire here, I think, in response to that mausoleum wanderer trigger. Mm -hmm. So that he can then also get the spell queller with it. Well, he won't be able to get it in one turn. Because if he um, tar fires the mausoleum wonder, well, I guess yeah. Actually, if and, just wait. Okay, the spell queller. If he just waits for the mausoleum wonder to die to the tar fire, he can uh, fire the abrupt decay afterwards. And then it's he can drop the death shadow. Does he have? Uh... Just checking his graveyard. He has three card types. Tarfire will obviously uh, get him delirium. So, yeah, he, he can actually de get two Death Shadows next turn. Yep, so Tarfire the Wanderer, and then Abrupt Decay the Quella. Yeah, there's some big plays here for uh Yeah, Emerson's playing off the top of his deck, so he's just watching out for Liliana's ultimate here. The past of exile being the draw here, that's not going to That's his second path down. Now, interestingly, Traverse the Overworld can actually find something he can play immediately. Uh, he can find a Dead Shadow or a Time of Wave. I'm thinking he'll probably go for the Time of Wave, but he won't be able to play it yet. Yeah, he, he doesn't have the life to be able to play the Death Shadow at this stage. He doesn't have the green to be able to play a Time of Wave immediately. So he gets the uh, time of life here. Gets rid of the death shadow, keeps the land. That's an interesting choice. Well, I think he's looking at the board and thinking Emerson just has no way of doing damage to him anytime soon. And <laughs> Emerson draws a collected company. <laughs> well, Liliana's going to be able to ultimate this turn if she if he wants to. Yeah, but that won't actually be that dangerous, I think, if a collected company can hit well because he can tap for land for mana before the ultimate, and then. Uh... <laughs> He can choose whatever power. Oh, he's ticking up. He's he's getting greedy. Yep, and collected company. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah, it was we also seen him in chat like no coco, no coco, no coco. <laughs> yeah. Oh but he uh, it fluffs it a bit again. And if you look at his uh all of his hand he's only got a Tarmogoyf. Yeah, and actually um that's good at this point. Like yeah, uh, the uh, the uh, collective company hit was, I think, pretty good at this point. Just being able to swing with 
Spell Queller and Self the Spirit at Liliana. Okay, he will Wait. be a bit behind, but um He is gonna put Liliana to three, so if Liliana wants to minus, then um Yeah, and Noble Hierarch can come down here to <laughs> uh eat up either a minus or a swing from the Diamondoid. Yeah, it's, it's starting to slowly swing back the other direction. Liliana's plus here is going to be useless. The minus is only going to get a noble hierarch. Yeah, it's going to get a hit in for Tamagoyf, but... Yeah, I, I think that's the line. Minus Liliana to get the hierarch out the way, and then swing the Tamagoyf. He, he, do, he doesn't need the mana anymore from the, the hierarch. He still does need to find some answer to, to the Tarmogoyf. Uh, he's mm. used two Path to Exiles already, so we, we haven't seen any of the spirit, uh, the, the illusion yet. Oh, and we see Emerson losing connection, a very vital function, in the, a vital uh, junction in the game. Yeah, that's a bit unusual. Uh, he, he does have, I think he said a few times, a, a problematic laptop. Yeah, I heard that he had some problems lately, but... Just looking at the... He's, he seems to still be in Discord. Well, th this would be huge if he if he doesn't come back. He's I think he's got five minutes because this game is quite evenly poised and if he doesn't come back according to the rules then uh, Oliver has the prerogative to take the game win which would be the match win yeah that would be quite big I wonder whether actually uh, Oliver would do that because uh... There is a lot of sportsmanship in the league, and you know, I have often seen people just say, like, okay, let's just play the third match again. Yeah, I, I think... Um, uh, I, I don't want to put too much, too much pressure on Oliver in case he, he wants to choose that path, but um, I, I think you're well within your rights to take the game win if it's you, clearly in your favour, but... Mm -hmm. This match is a bit, it's pretty even, so, yeah, I'm not sure what the decision would, I think the decision is different for each person, but um, Emerson has, oh, he's back on Discord now, yeah. so I'm guessing he's going to be rejoining. He did drop from Discord for a moment there. Yeah, here he goes, he's back. So, crisis yeah. averted. Yeah, I think, actually, like, you're, uh... No one will blame you for taking uh, the win at that point, um, but it is uh, something that I see a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what I was trying to convey. Like, um, it's 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 not bad sportsmanship, or it's not low, or anything like. Oh, that's a big play, a fatal push. Uh, it's not bad sportsmanship, or it's not low to take that path. But, um, yeah, it's a difficult one. That, that is a huge draw. So mm -hmm. by removing the Noble Hierarch here, he's going to get a two for one with Liliana. Yeah, that's actually going to be a huge deal here. L Liliana still dies. But then he'd have to choose... Emerson would have to choose between... If he doesn't draw another creature, he'd have to choose between attacking or... Um, I, I think the plus is useless because he dies anyway to this four power in the air. Um, oh, I think, I think him. Wait, no. 
Did he plus to Liliana? No, but did he minus on himself? I don't think he minus on himself yet, right? He minus two, like that's the built in the stack, and I think he still needs two. Yeah. yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> How um, do you even do that? <laughs> oh no, time will go off down. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I think that's just. <laughs> I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> you just click on yourself, it's just target player, so. That, 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 could, uh, that could be a player that decides the, the Division 1 champion. <laughs> 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 he's, he's drawn a mausoleum wanderer. Liliana down, and I don't know how Oliver comes back from this now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of would have expected a roll back there because of how stupid it was, but it is yeah, uh, Division oh, 1 championship. going to pump every. This is getting out of hand. <laughs> Like, uh, uh, <laughs> he made uh, like a huge misclick and then he gets super hot uh, so punished for it. <laughs> it's a, it's a, Emerson's going to take more than two games to one. Yeah, I, I think I, I personally, I certainly would have asked for a misclick uh, for a rollback. Unless what rollbacks are turned, I, I turn rollbacks off in my games, so perhaps they did as well. But Emerson's got more than two games to one because of that massive error. <laughs> Oh my god, man, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> if we had, like, a blooper, best bloopers of the season, I think that's... <laughs> that's <laughs> right the up top. in the rank. <laughs> We're back with Legacy now. Uh, I don't remember what Emerson plays in Legacy. I'm expecting to see elves from Oliver. Hmm. I remember Emerson yeah. having oh, a hate yeah. for. Yeah. Emerson play, usually plays Team of Delva. Ah, yeah, right. that's true. He took down Legacy Cup with it. Yeah, but... yeah, Sunday night is Legacy Cup champion. And it looks like oh, it's. Yeah. Was it Teamer or Sultai? Ah, oh, Sultai, sorry. Yeah, Sultai. So, Sultai, Delva versus oh, Elves. Yeah. I think Elves is actually. Um, favored here in this matchup. Yeah, because I, I normally play blue red, and even blue red has access to uh, like a sweeper, the the two damage sweeper. That's kind of like a fall fallback strategy because it wipes your board as well. I, I don't know what Soltai would play in terms of a sweeper, but the problem with the elves playing against the self deck it just has so many threats in so many different directions you don't know what to you meant to use your force of will on yeah and there's lots of ways to get more value and um... yeah and if i just look at uh oh his deck he, he doesn't have it at the moment he's got some guys cradle there but when, once he gets to four mana that's this deck just explodes you can see here an upkeep brainstorm so he's making sure delve is gonna trigger Oh yeah, asking for hand cards now. Him to Torah is going to be a big deal, I think. Force of Will can be good as well. Let's take a look at what the other stack has. That test right shaman coming down now. Okay, so the elf, decks ha elf deck has an elvish visionary in the hand, and oh yeah, and he's just drawn a wirewood symbiote, and he's got the Gaia's Cradle. So I think this is going to be a pretty big deal uh, for like he's going to be starting the value engine here. So when you say that, what do you mean? What's he going to do? So elvish visionary is going to calm down, uh, then. Wirewood Symbiote can come down and bring Elvish Visionary back, 
and then play it again, drawing more and more cards every time. But he, he, he can do this once per turn, though, can't he, with yeah, the symbiote? Yeah, he can do it once per turn, but it's still uh, quite a big value game for drawing one card per turn. Uh... <sighs> Yeah, the, the, the Selves deck, I, I've played against Oliver a couple of times. I think he's comfortably beaten me both times. It, it just explodes. Like, one, once he gets his thing going, you just kind of have to sit on the other side and just watch. It's actually interesting that there was a point where you could have actually said, like, I'm going to counterspell the, the Elvish Visionary. Like, I'm going to force a field of Elvish Visionary. And that would have stopped a lot of value here. Um, but Emerson chose not to do that. Yeah, and just so much mana from the Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, it's just nuts, like... Emerson's had two turns, and he, he's staring across at two, four, six, seven creatures. Now, and the interesting thing about the Wirewood Symbiote Elvish Visionary uh, combo is that if an Abrupt Decay would go after the Elvish Visionary, for example, you could just bring it back with Wirewood Symbiote and get it out of uh, range there. So he's, he's just exiled, he's scavenging his exile uh, Brainstorm, and just, I'm guessing he's going to start going to work on Deathrite Shaman's ability to do damage. He might also still use it to get some uh, extra mana here if he can find it. He found a Wasteland, that might actually be quite big here. But to, I think there's a second uh, copy of Gaia's Cradle. Yep, in he's hand, got a, yeah. th three lands in hand, one of them is a Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, Gaia's Cradle being definitely the most important here. <laughs> but he's going to take an absolute beating next turn. Two, two, four, six, seven, eight, about eight plus damage coming through. I think um, the Elvish Visionary really should have been Force of Will there. I actually think it might be just good to force of will as a rule. Um, and then, uh, because it just I creates it, it, too much value. It looks like you can cast him to Turak here. Perhaps but he's so. still going to be left with that guy's cradle in hand. Well, uh, actually, the start two cards at random, so just. Oh, it's a random? Well, yeah. This will be interesting. There's a pretty high chance that he will actually. Uh, <laughs> and the yeah, Gaia's exactly. Cradle is the last card in the hand. And there's a Visionary back to hand. Interestingly, I think I actually would have returned a creature to my hand in response to him to Torak to create more chance that uh, Gaia's Cradle wouldn't actually have been hit by. And seems like we'll be seeing a Nissa Vital Force coming down here. Just look at Nissa's um, her possibility is to turn a land into a five five elemental. Well minus three or ten target card from graveyard, which is a bit more risky with Death Right Shaman. I think he's just going to like play the Craig Guys Cradle. Um Tap it for lots of mana and play this the Vital Force and Elvish Visionary, and then just untap the Dryad Arbor, or actually untap the Gaia's Cradle. He can untap the Gaia's Cradle and just swing for a massive amount of damage here. The Vital Force, um, the plus ability is still a land, so can he bounce the 5 5 land back to his hand? Yeah, he can actually bounce the 5-5 five, five land back to his hand with um, 
the Kyrian Rager. <laughs> yeah, um, Force of Will doesn't need me to come down here. Yeah, because if that resolved, it had 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage on board, it would have been lethal. Yeah. And those are all cards he drew into because of the mm -hmm. obvious visionaries <laughs> coming down twice and then drawing him two cards mm -hmm. and then running away with. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's why I think like the, the Elves deck is really good against the um against the how do you call it? Uh, yeah, blue decks like control decks like Sultai Delver, just because they can create so much value so easily and almost everything they play is a way to either ramp really quickly or to get a large amount of value. And it's um, even something like Pyroclasm, it, it can deal with that as well because it just bounces them back to hand. But I think this is game one to Oliver right here. Yep. Even if he holds Delver back, he's still going to take one, two, three. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. Um... Like the Nettle Sentinels might not untap for combat. But that's unlikely. Because yeah, it can just bounce Elvish Visionary and then I, I think he could survive a turn if he blocks the twos. One, two, three, four, five, six would be coming through ever up to K one, it'd take four. So he could survive a turn. And he's gonna concede though. So again, yeah. one will go to Oliver, and this will be an interesting sideboard from Emerson. See what he can come up with. Okay, we're back. With game two. Yeah. And if Oliver wins this matchup, would uh, would it be equal in points, or uh, how would the standings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Currently, Oliver sits four points clear with a game. With it, he's played one extra game though. So because they're, they're, they they split the standard and modern, the gap is still four points. So if Oliver wins, he'll extend the gap to eight points. Uh -huh. But um, Emerson still has a game in hand. So if Emerson was to win all three of his matches in the game in hand, he would go ahead. But if he wins two of the three, then Oliver would be ahead because Oliver would have won his head-to-head -head against Emerson two games to one. Getting... So, so this... Yeah. This game is huge, has a lot of uh, implications. This is getting really complex. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll pub when I publish, uh, the problem is this is week seven, so I'm not going to publish this result yet because it's going to walk the standings after week six. But it, it, it will be very clear the. Yeah, it was the also outcome. somewhat interesting. Uh, like, when the European League was a bit behind on points and then I finished my games and the standings were published of that it was like huge amount of points ahead but yeah. yeah actually I was just looking at the European division um when you play eight matches it means you have two games to go and if you can pick up a solitary point one point in either of those two matches in standard you you will be the standard champion uh and modern i think felix has to drop a match for you to win modern and felix has already won legacy he can't lose legacy yeah uh legacy i definitely wasn't in contention for because I, yeah. like I, that's where i dropped most of my points um yeah but, but, but in, in terms of european champion it's a two horse race it's felix is on 66 points you're on 60 and then it's daylight Luca's back on on thirty three. Yeah, and I think that's sixty eight is with the two games he won from uh, actually this the next week against Luca. So 
Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He, so, uh, in terms of standings, he's a game, he's a game ahead of you. He still has to play Legacy against Luca, so he could feasibly be ten points ahead, but with a game extra. Yeah. So. But you have the advantage because you beat him in the head-to-head two games to one. So if you were to finish on even points, you'd be ahead. Yeah. If I if he does a perfect game and I'd also do a perfect game, where I'm still a bit ahead, but. <laughs> Mm. It is. Uh, Wait. I believe you can see. Here. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I believe that was the case at least. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's just you can speculate, but it's just a bit too close to call at the moment. I think it's that that league is going down to the last week. Yeah. Uh... You can see here, Emerson's bought in Toxic Deluge, so that's going to be a good card in this. Oh yes, I. I almost forgot about that card. Um, that's actually I've seen it played as well in the in the cup. I think in the, that that did a lot. But Wirewood is going to be able to protect a bit against it because he can bounce something. Back yeah, he can bounce the Elvish Visionary back. Um, even on the like, he can even do it during Emerson's turn. Because then you can only use it once per turn. But um, if Emerson goes for the Toxic Deluge next turn, it's a, it's a new, a whole new day. So Elvish Veginary can be brought back. And that gives so, more value. So um, I, if, you're, if you're Emerson, are you going to do it next turn? Or are you going to try and get greedy and wait for a few more? Nick, like one of the other plays that I do like is just playing Leovolt. But then that would bring Force of Will down line, so I think if I don't draw a blue card, I'd go for the Toxic Deluge. If I do draw a blue card, I'd go for Leovolt and just try to strangle the the value there. Wasteland being the draw. Yeah, yeah Wastelanding a Gaia's Cradle and Toxic Deluge sounds like a good plan. Yeah, even if he is to bounce back the the Elvish Visionary, I, I think without that Wirewood, he, he's lost he's lost that key engine that he's got yeah. going. And also, um, Toxic Deluge will also take down Dryad Arbor, so he'll be left with one Cavern of Souls as a land, and that's a lot harder to come back from than... Uh... So you think he's going to bounce the Visionary, or will he bounce the Arbor? Well, the arbor is isn't an elf; it's a dryad. So, oh yes, I think he'll bounce the, the visionary. Um, also interesting whether Emerson will go for one and kill uh, most of the elves, or go for two and uh, kill uh, every every one of them. Yeah, but I think, he set it to two, so he's going to wipe the board. Yeah, I think that's best play here because you really can't have them. Uh, Keeping Death Ride Shaman and a, a Metal Sentinel. It's going to gain some life here. Yep, the, the life total is once he wastelands that guy's cradle, he's got a huge advantage. Yep. Particularly once Leovold comes down. Yeah, it's interesting actually where you play Leovolt or keep up the force of feel. I think you play Leovolt just because it's such an awesome card. Um, take a look at all of his hand here. He did find a land to play for uh, well, an interesting sideboard card here being yeah. Choke. That, was, that could be huge. Abrupt Decay can also take down Leovolt or do that will draw Leovolt a card. So unless, unless Emerson draws a blue card, I think this game could still uh, go pretty well for um, Oliver here. Yeah, the self deck just seems like it can recover and rebuild so quickly. Yeah. And, um, so it, Here's Leovold, so we'll see, see if we're going to see the extra land with the choke next turn. There it is, so we'll see if he, he can run out choke now. Yeah, no force of will. Um... No force of will online, and abrupt decay in hand. Uh, 
this is pretty much looking like... Then again, if Emerson draws a blue card next turn, Force Will uh, can counter Abrupt Decay, and this could still be won by Emerson. Oh, and, and abrupt Decay cannot be countered. Well, that's handy, Tassigar. Oh, yeah, actually, that's true. Tassigar is a big deal, yes. <laughs> like, a huge deal. I don't think the Elves deck has any way that they can deal with such a huge body. Yeah, and that's <laughs> basically a three-turn clock, because Elvish Visionary can block, but um, he has to block. And uh, Toxic Deluge can also come down. Also, no, that would weaken uh, Tassigar himself, but... But the problem is for the Deluge is the choke, not freeing the mana. Oh, yeah. I suspect... Oh, that's going to take it. Leave odds. It's going to be a card draw. Let's see what that draws. I do like playing a Leopold with a Force of Will uh, in hand, because sometimes it just draws you into a blue card that you can then use to... F Counter the spell that targets Leovold. So Oliver's out of cards now. Staring two down. jump blockers. Okay, so you can see that toxic deluge next turn. Yeah, and possibly if he draws another land, he can set up uh, Dasigur again. But like Dasigur's ability. But uh, I wonder if um, Emerson has anything in his deck that can get rid of that choke. Well, I think he's got a Abrupt Decay in his deck. Not sure what it's still in, but I'd, I'd expect it to still be in the, the deck that, that can actually deal with an enchantment as well. well we're just in a pesky interaction here with the Quarion Qu 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 Ranger. He can just keep doing this every turn. Oh yeah, it's... Uh, an Semi fog, so I say. <laughs> just, just, just another. What's the saying? Feather in the bow of the selves deck. Yeah. Uh, Arrow in the bow. I'm, I'm not sure what the saying yeah, is. Yeah, I'm not sure what that saying is either. It's, uh, <laughs> that's probably just because I'm uh, also not exactly. <laughs> Uh, native English speaker, so I don't think I've heard it yet. You, you can see here he's going to be able to bounce that visionary. He's got two query on ranges now. Well, he won't be able to bounce the visionary because um, it can only return a forest to control to own his hand. So oh, the, the toxic deluge coming down will actually mean uh, losing both query and rangers and. Uh, Quite likely a tree power Tassigur coming through, so that's a three turn clock. Um, uh, so, this is the second toxic del deluge. All of it's going to be out of cards now, or uh, minus the one he's going to build. He's going to get one Dryad Arbor as a shun blocker, and that's that. And also, um, if Emerson has enough lands in his hand, he will be able to. Play Misty Rainforest, forest, fetch up another forest, and then uh, start activating Tassigur. Oh, this visionary from the top here, it's pretty big. What can you find? Bendel Haven, not going to be too much. Probably a dry lava is going to come down here. So he can survive at least two more turns. Yep. Any um, damage coming through here, unless Tassigur is weakened, will be lethal, but it's got plenty of shun blockers. Yes, yeah, no uh, trample on the Tassigur. So as, as long as he can find an elf each turn, he can keep buying, buying time. It's actually pretty impressive how well the elf deck protects itself from a huge threat just by... Yeah, and a him to Torak not going to do too much. If I were Emerson, I'd probably go for uh, Misty Rainforest and try to fetch a forest and uh, get another card from uh, the graveyard. 
Yeah, and if we look in his graveyard, there's quite a few targets there. Yeah, so either he gets a blue spell um, that uh, puts Force of Will online, uh, or he gets a Toxic Deluge, which is a huge problem for uh, Oliver's deck. Yeah, and I, I think, look, you'd probably, if you're Oliver, you'd probably give him back Ponder, because uh, Delver's got an evasion that's going to get around those pesky blockers. You sure, certainly don't want to give him back Toxic Deluge. Yeah, and Leopold doesn't sound like a great target either. Oh, we don't see an end of turn activation. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised there. Uh, uh, unless he doesn't have another forest to fetch up. That could actually <sighs> be true, which would be so brutal. <laughs> Uh, uh the, the only thing, I, yeah, that, that would mean no forest and no bio, so he's probably got another tropical island, so if he fetched it, then uh, Choke will stop that. Yeah, he can still fetch an island and activate it once. That he and, can uh, do. And, uh, like, I, I don't really like it because him to Turak, when Oliver's playing off the top of his deck, he can just return that card to him each turn. <sighs> Scavenger, scavenging ooze is just going to be a chump blocker here. Yeah. Chump blockers keep getting in the way. I really like just activating the Misty Rainforest just to find an island and um, getting the activation from Dasigur because it allows him to, if he... Oh, actually, scavenging ooze might become big enough to... Yeah, because it's gaining life. So it's oh, so he doesn't have to he doesn't have to block this turn. Yeah, time will go if coming down here for uh, Emerson, that's going to be a big deal as well. Yep, so you can go to two here. What's well, uh, so, so he's not interested in activating Tassiga. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can only guess that he just doesn't have another land to target with the forest. The misty forest, rainforest. Yeah, I think I still would have gone for uh, fetching up an island that one turn, just because it uh, would get me another card. And uh... yeah, he still has the three lands that would untap. Yeah, and there's just so much value, uh, so much uh, top decking going on here, really battling to try and get as good cards as possible. That I think. Do we have enough uh, creatures here? There is going to be a lot of creatures. Um, yeah, yeah, he can make his own graveyard. There's four, plenty there. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, um, <laughs> that scavenging ooze might actually win him the game. Yeah, because he's going to be in the point that he's, he, he needs to at least do two more and, and then uh, to get out of Tamagoyf range. And then there's no there's no viable attacks for Emerson. Yeah. Although, of course, a fatal push off the top would, would instantly win the match. Yeah, an abrupt decay, fatal push. Uh, lots of cards could actually be. Uh, does he have an? Uh, he actually. Does Pendlehaven produce green? Yeah, it, it does. does. Yeah. Uh, okay, so he can go to six. I, I think he just has to do it carefully to make sure that Emerson can't put a card type in the graveyard to buff on the goy. We'll see him fetching up a land here. Will it be a forest or an Is island? It, he's only got two card types, so if Emerson could somehow get rid of a an instant. There's no instance in the graveyard. Oh, yeah, there is an abrupt decay. So there's four card types. Yeah, because time of is a four five, so. Uh... Brainstorm here. Could be big. <laughs> force of will, force of will in the wasteland. Uh... Not exactly what he's looking for at this point, but so here's the the play. Yeah. Um. The problem is really like. Oh, actually, he can uh put those cards into the graveyard now. 
with Tasugur and try to avoid drawing them, which I think is a good play. But actually, the the Dotsies will be coming back, but there's still plenty of targets targets for Oliver in the grave. Yeah. Um... Interestingly, this I think... Is, this is starting to become a problem for Oliver. He, he needs to do something here. He can actually... Oliver can actually swing the scavenging news's turn if he wants to and, and force a chump lock. Yep. And he'll be protected on the way back. He, he would, of course, be dead if there was a fatal push there. Actually, but I think if there's, yeah. a, if there's a fatal push, he probably would have played it last turn and then swung. Actually... Thinking back on that brainstorm, I think I would have kept the Totsies in hands or to... Uh, yeah, I think I might have actually kept the Totsies in hand to then activate Tassigur and... Uh, or to then probably you'd get a, t a Toxic Deluge back and it's not going to be good either. So it, the activation would probably just be to... I, I, I think he would just give him back him to Turek. Oh yeah, that's true as well. And to Turek is plenty of... So... I think if I'm Oliver, I swing here. Yeah, um, I think that's definitely a good plan. Yep, he's he's going for it. So, if, if you're Emerson, which one are you going to give up? I'd give up the time ago, probably. Yep. Then I'd activate Tassigur, try to get those cards in graveyard, and draw Fatal Push or something. Uh, yeah, I think Emerson, he definitely has to activate this turn. He doesn't want to draw those cards. Oh. Is he going to... Oh, he didn't do it. Nope. I wonder whether he forgot that Tassigur had that ability. I think surely not. Oh, he's conceding. Wow. I, <laughs> Somehow Oliver's just stolen that one. I think he, he really did because he did have a chance to uh, actually... Use the ability we'll see on his reaction to the videos, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think missing that those couple of activations from Tessica was the difference. Yep. Could have.